This video is going to cover how to carve your bunkers with RAM. Um, this is much more efficient than carving it by hand using the Unity tools. So I hopefully you uh, bought RAM. Um, and if not, maybe you can just use this video as a, a way of um, convincing yourself you should buy RAM. Um, I'm inserting this very beginning part of this video in front of an older video I did. Um, that I'll, I'll introduce here in a second. But uh, just a couple things about carving bunkers with RAM. Uh, first of all, make sure only your terrain inner, okay, your main terrain, make sure that's the only terrain you have enabled when carving with RAM or digging with RAM. The reason being is RAM will get confused if you have multiple terrains and it might either dig on the wrong one or not dig at all. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. Um, when you're using RAM, if you've got a bunker and it's on a sloped terrain, so it's not even, um, it can be a little bit challenging because what we're doing is we're using a thing called a lake polygon. And just like the name say, it says, a lake polygon is designed to dig a lake. So it's going to want to dig a bowl. And as soon as you tilt that bowl, all right, well, a lake polygon is thinking you want to put water in there. So what it's going to try to do is dig, it's going to try to lift up the lower end of that bowl so that you can put water in it, okay? Well, that creates a problem for bunkers. You don't want that. You want the bottom side of that bunker to be flat onto your terrain. So what I recommend is you can still dig with RAM, but what you're going to have to do is afterwards, you're going to have to lower that side, that lip that gets built up. And if you do this on a sloped terrain, you'll see that. So in other words, you're going to dig and then you're going to use the Unity tools to go back and smooth out that lip a little bit or flatten it out. It's going to be a little extra work. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, and also the video I'm about to show you is a little bit older. Um, but before I show you that video, let me um, go and show you how to disable your terrains really quick. You're, you're probably familiar with this, but so this is a, a different course that I, I had worked on. And you can see here, I have my terrain inner right here, I have my outer and I have my foliage. All three of these are turned on right now. Now at this point in the process, maybe you don't have a foliage yet. You will probably, well, you definitely will later on. Um, but what you wanna do is before you start creating or doing anything in the videos I'm about to introduce to you, you wanna come in here, just go to your outer, if you have an outer and disable it. And if you have a foliage, come in here and disable it as well. Now you just wanna make sure that you turn your outer back on before you build your course or it won't be visible. And then before you plant more uh, plants, trees, use VS Pro or Unity planting tools, you wanna to make sure you turn your foliage back on too or things just won't work. So just remember that you turn these off. Um, at this point, that's it. RAM should work now. Just make sure again, you've got one terrain, the one you wanna dig on enabled. And at this point, I'm going to start the old video I did. This is one of the first videos I've done, and it still holds, so I didn't want to recreate it. Um, but I'm going to pop, stop here and uh, start the other video. Hi, this is uh, Master Blasta. Uh, I am going to show you how to use RAM to do a really nice bunker lowering of your terrain. Um, I don't know if this is necessarily faster, but it is very consistent. Um, I'm doing this so I don't forget because it might be a while before I do this again um, and also might help some of you. Um, so first thing is my LIDAR for some reason. Uh, it's older LIDAR so it's not exactly precise but all my bunkers are essentially flat. I want to lower them a little bit. You could do you know you could do it using terrain tools like the lowering tool and you get in here and you have to scoop everything out or lower it and it gets a little tedious especially if you want it to look nice so this way uh, these will look really nice and um, you'll be able to get consistent so your bunkers will all be about the same depth if that's what you're looking for so first of all you have to have ram um, make sure you have ram imported and installed and then in your hierarchy over here you're just going to right click 3d object and you're going to do a create lake polygon at this point, I like to go directly above the bunker in question. Let's do this figure eight guy right here. I'm going to center right above him. All right. You're going to hold down control and you're going to start drawing, just clicking out, similar to like the splining process inside of Inkscape. And I'm just going to start clicking out. And I like to put it this fuzzy area between the solid yellow but not black, that's where I find the best area to click is. All 
All right. So looking pretty good so far. Now, the trick to doing this I found is that you see how there's, it, it, Ram is trying to put water in here. And this you, you, white you see is the water level. And everything you see kind of on this side with the dark orange, and over see, here you see this is light orange, um, this would be the water plane. If we were to lower this just like this, um, because this side over here is lower, um, it's going to put a lip and it's going to raise the terrain outside of this. So what I do is I'm going to now go down to a different view here and look at this kind of at a different angle. All right, look at it from the side here. And I'm going to turn on this rotation tool up here. All right, and you see I get this gizmo. And if I raise and lower this gizmo, you can see that on the far end of this over here, the orange disappears first. Now it could lower this all the way down, all right? But I want to tip this so it's much more even when it goes down. So I'm going to rotate this guy a little bit. And now you can see when I lower it, it's a little bit better. Now I went a little too, too far. So let me go back up. Now when I lower this, ah, it all lowers and I have like, this this surface here now is pretty much level with my bunker, okay? It doesn't have to be perfect. This is actually really good. Don't get too hung up on this and spend a lot of trying to get it perfect. But we just wanna lower this enough that all the orange perimeter around the outside disappears just enough. Now it's gone. The reason we do that is if you don't ram because it thinks it's planting water, or sphere, it's going to build up the train around here, which is not what we want. We want this train to basically blend into the existing train. All right, so now we have our polygon at the right spot and the right height. Now we're going to go over here and adjust a couple things. First of all, in this train carve, we're going to click in this area and we can bring up our profile. This is if you take a, a, a if you dissect the the bunker this would be the top of the bunker this would be the bottom of the bunker and this is telling you it's going to be two meters deep right maybe this is the shape you're going for now what you can do is you can alter this like you can lower the whole thing if you double click you can put a point in here and you can say oh i want the top part where the lip of the bunker is steep and then have it flatter this would be the middle of the bunker and then what happens is this would get mirrored on the other side. So the other side would come up. So now you get an idea of what your shape and depth of your bunker looks like. Um, once you create one of these, you can save it as a profile. You hit this little down button and you click new and it'll actually save this. So now when you do more bunkers, you just have, you don't have to do this every time. You just hit where it's saved and it'll save it down here as another profile. But let me show you, this is the profile I've been using for this course, um, which I like. So I like my bunkers. It's just over a meter deep. So, you know, three or four feet deep, not too bad. Um, and then, uh, so it's gonna get steep. So if a ball hits up here, it's gonna roll down to the bunker and then it kind of flattens out. So I'm gonna use this profile and I just close this and you can see that this profile is now selected. And the next two settings you want to play with, smooth distance is where your uh, this perimeter meets your uh, terrain. It's going to take, it's going to say, hey, I'm going to take 1.5 meters and blend those di the differentials and distance together over that 1.5 meters. That's the setting I look like. You could, if you shorten it, it'll be more of a steeper drop in that blending if you lengthen it it might go into your greens okay so you just got to be careful it might mess up your greens so 1.5 is good and i might change this based on my this this bunker's a little bit further away it's not touching the fringe if these were really close to the fringe or on the green i might change this to maybe one meter or even like 0.75 and my smooth start distance i want it zero i want it to start smoothing right at the perimeter here and then i'm going to click carve terrain now, it carved underneath there, you just can't see it. So if you wanna take a look at it, uncheck, and now you should be able to zoom in and look around. Ah, looking nice. All right, see how smooth it is up here? 
blended it right in. Looking good. One thing I forgot to mention is make sure you back up your train. So before I did this, I actually did a train backup, but you want to do a create train backup. I, I do one hole at a time, then I create a backup and I move to the next hole. That way, if you, most of my comment, I, I forget to pick stuff over here before I carve, and then it makes it really easy to go back. Maybe save your train every few holes. Um, this crane backup tool is fantastic, huge time saver, um, but make sure you use that. Um, that's it. Thanks for watching.